Do you know what? I have for years wanted to have this moment and now it's finally come. I get to interview you, Phil. This is brilliant. I've known you for so many years, but we've never had an interview conversation. Do you know the weird thing is I always think interviewers make the worst interviewees just because we're always guarded because we know what you're after. And so in the back of my mind, it will be ticking over what does she want? What little sordid bit of information is she after? Although once I did, I'm going to drop a name to begin with, um, interview Michael Parkinson. And that was one of the worst interviews of my life. It was a great interview. But do you know when you're watching somebody thinking, am I saying the right thing? Am I asking the right questions? Is he enjoying it? Trying to keep eye contact, you know, doing all those things that you're told to do. Anyway, yeah. it was fine. It's a good look. Very guarded, very guarded, I imagine he was. But you know what? I've got quite a few things up my sleeve, Phil. So try not to be too scared. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we go back, oh gosh, so many years. Um, we started off kind of like doing a bit of radio back in, oh gosh, the was it the 90s? I think it was yeah, the 90s it actually, 90s, at yeah. the old yeah. BBC Radio Manchester station, which was, of course, on Oxford Road. That place was like homage to that place. But your career has spanned, I don't even believe this, you must be using some good face cream, over 30 years, Phil. Do you know, funnily enough, there is a Twitter account which is called UK Radio Bits. And I don't know where they found this from, but they tweeted out the other day a clip of me from 1988. And it was funny because Roger Johnson, who presents Northwest Tonight, uh, always used to listen to me because it used to be in Stoke Signal Radio where I was broadcasting from, which was where Roger grew up. And uh, he said, he said, wow, he said, you've not changed. Your voice hasn't changed. And I listened to it. I was like, blimey, that just sounds so unlike me. Um, but yeah, I started in 1986, actually. So that was at Signal in Stoke, um, which is, what, 35 years ago, isn't it? I no, was three. I having a laugh. Yeah, I was three. <laughs> Youngest forecaster ever. Could it be this photo? Oh, wow. Do you know, that actually flatters me because that's about... 89 that was just as I was leaving there are there are way worse than that I thank you Michelle Eagleton for being generous <laughs> I don't mind that one <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't at Stoke then yeah that was still at Signal that was just as I was coming to the end of my time there but oh, funny that my yeah. very first I'll have to get you a copy of this my very first publicity photo was when Wixie was in EastEnders and do you remember he used to wear a scarf around his neck Nick Berry I don't know if you remember yeah. that and I thought that was uber cool. So when we went to the photograph session, I thought I'm gonna put a scarf around my neck, right? And ever since everybody goes, why are you wearing that ridiculous scarf? I was like, I was, you know, sort of like getting me in a wixie. <laughs> I need to see that and you need to sign it for me, promise me. I will do, I will do. Brilliant, but it kind of started a bit further back than at Signal because you started off on hospital radio when you were about 18, right? Yeah, earlier than that, funnily enough. So um, I went to Ermston Grammar School and uh, the young lad that I sat next to was a guy called Simon Parkin. And Simon later did Children's BBC with like Ed the Duck and Andy Peters and so on. And at the time, Simon was just um, uh, obsessed by radio, loved radio and everything about it. And um, we got together and he'd got a little radio station in his bedroom. And then uh, Trafford General, as it is now, Park Hospital at the time, used to do a cracking chips and gravy on a Thursday night. So we'd go along, mainly because we couldn't get in any pubs, and we'd go and have the chips and gravy and then go and sit in what was called Radio Wishing Well, which was the hospital radio station there. And then foolishly, they just stuck us both on air one day. And uh, we did it for a couple of years. And then various people said we should send demo tapes off. And the very first one that I sent was to Signal. And bizarrely, they said, do you want to come and do the early show? And at the time I was working for the post office behind the counter in Stratford. Well, anything was better than that. So I thought, yeah, go on. And that's how it started. I, I thought it would be for three months and that would be it. Hey, it's all thanks to chips and gravy. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, chips gravy. And uh, what was the horrible song we used to always play? Because I don't know why Hospital Radio had like a very limited playlist. I think it was like the old rugged cross and it'd be like, oh, good grief. <laughs> well, I have got to say, I can trump you on that one because I started out on Hospital Radio too for North Manchester General Hospital. And uh, I had to do this thing to earn my place on the radio. We had to ward walk. I don't know if they made you do that where you got the request from people on the wards. So they had me do that for four weeks. And the request that I got was Michael Ball, was a favourite, love changes everything. But they all thought they were funny when they requested Engelberg Humperdinck, please release me. <laughs> Very good, actually. In fairness, that's decent. I know, I know. So you moved on from Signal um, and then obviously you have gone to lots of different stations, Radio Derby. Uh, but, you know, the home for me that I know you of is BBC Radio Manchester. You're like a, a fixture there. Radio Manchester wouldn't be Radio Manchester without Phil Tro. Do you know, I worked out, I've, I mean, I've been away, so I wouldn't like to anyone to think I've been there for the full, what is it, uh, 31 years, because I started in 1990. Um, but I was working out the other day, yeah, I probably am the longest serving person there now, because Eamon and Jimmy, who were doing Sunday mornings, they were there when I was there, but of course they've since finished the Sunday morning show. And so, yeah, I've, I've kind of been there on and off for 31 years. Uh, I did a load of shows at the beginning in the early 90s. I used to do the morning show, then the afternoon show. Uh, then I decided to go freelance and I did various, gosh, I did loads of different things. And then I came back, I think it was about 2013, um, to do the afternoon show. So yeah, it does feel though, like I've been there a long time. Long time. Oh, but everybody loves you. I mean, you must have a real good bunch of listeners. And I imagine over the years, they feel like friends because you do get the regular ones that kind of tune in and must message you. Oh, all the time. Do you know, I mean, social media is just a blessing nowadays, isn't it? Because obviously somebody would have to put pen and paper to write to you in the past. Whereas now it's, you know, through Twitter and through Instagram and Facebook and so on, people get in touch in so many different ways. Um, but it's quite strange, actually, when people refer back to, oh, yeah, I used to listen to you in the early 90s. So it does seem the st sort of station that people stay with, um, which is great. But it, it to me, I mean, gosh, 31 years ago, sticking with the same station, you think, wow, that is in itself an achievement, isn't it? Yeah, and in 31 years, there is a lot of people that you have interviewed and asked so many questions to. Let's cut to the crunch, okay? Who has been your favourite person to interview? What has been that moment where you've gone, oh, that was great? Gosh, do you know, the weird thing is, um, a few weeks ago, this is, by the way, my spare bedroom, which we're transforming at the moment. And uh, so we've been throwing loads of stuff away. And I found a diary from 1992. And uh, I was going through it. And at the time I was doing the morning show, which was kind of like the showbiz show. And you know, when you go through a diary and you think, I don't remember interviewing any of these people. So there was like Terry Wogan, I did Bob Monkhouse, Scylla Black, Barbara Windsor, all these sort of like really big names from uh, the world of TV. I can't remember any of the interview. I can't even remember meeting them, to be quite honest. So and you it's don't weird, even drink, it? Phil, so you can't say you'd had a few drinks. No, no, I just genuinely, I was going through and I thought, I do not remember. Mind you, I can't remember who I spoke to last week, to be quite honest. And then even celebrities will come in and go, hello again. And you think, oh, I've done them before. But I, I've just got a sieve for a brain. Uh, but favourites, funnily enough, from that era, who not it funny who you how you idolise certain people? And I interviewed Les Dawson, and I oh, loved yeah. Les Dawson. And he was doing Panto at the uh, Palace Theatre. And uh, I'll always remember, he invited me into his dressing room, made me a cup of tea, and uh, we start to do the interview. And he was on with the Roly Polies. And oh, they were, the Roly Polies! Yeah. They were rehearsing, I think they were doing um, a Life on the Ocean Wave or something, and Les Dawson just gets out of his chair, opens the door and says, shut up, you ugly lot! <laughs> and <shuts the> door. <laughs> uh, but he was amazing, and I will always remember Les Dawson, the very first time Les Mis came to uh, the Manchester Palace Theatre. Do you remember? I'm sure you must have been there. And halfway through the show, at the interval, the barricades jammed. And that was it. They couldn't do anything. Do you remember? Yes, I and do. So Cameron McIntosh came on the stage during the interval and said, look, 
I'm really sorry, everybody, but we're going to have to cancel the show. We'll make sure you come back and watch it. And at this point, Les Dawson, who was sat about three rows away from me, just shouts out, well, at least tell us how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> That is classic, though. And, you know, he was a legend. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just, just a great man. Um, I believe you've also interviewed somebody very high up and quite controversial. A bit Marmite. If I oh, said the words yeah. Margaret Thatcher. Oh, gosh. Do you know, honestly, all the people I've ever interviewed, I have never been more nervous than mm -hmm. interviewing her. And I realised, you know, you've just said it there. She was Marmite. And uh, she just, just brought out the Downing Street years. And I just waited, you know, sort of like for weeks for this interview. And I'd read the book about 300 times. I'd made more notes about this book and about her than I've done anybody. I literally had reams and reams of paper. And I think I only had 15 minutes with her. And uh, I remember it was a pre-recorded interview, which means that it's not live. You record it. So uh, we were waiting for her and she came into the studio and she was with this uh, very officious publisher who just said to me, he said, um, right, you've only got 12 minutes because we're running a bit late and walks out. And she turned to me and she just said, I'm the boss. You take as long as you like. And I thought, woo! So anyway, before we'd even started, she basically interviewed me. She wanted to know my background, where I lived, how long I'd done radio and so on and so forth. And uh, it's, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because I've sometimes talked about this if I've done after dinners and so on, and people talk about her. Um, and one I found her uh, utterly charming, which generally people are when they're trying to flog a book. So, you know, I know that that was uh, probably a bit of a put on character. But two, do you know how um, apparently men used to fall at her feet because mm -hmm. she was this such big figure? I could understand that now because she had this presence and this aura. And she, when she spoke, you just were transfixed on her. And she was so engaging as a guest. Anyway, I got 30 minutes out of it and a very oh, stern letter from a publisher who'd come in and said, uh, in future, when we tell you 12 minutes, we expect 12 minutes. But I just thought... Pfft. I've got 30 minutes of great audio, I don't care. Maggie said you could. She yeah. was the boss, that's fine. Uh, just a quick question on that. It was uh, Gillian Anderson's representation of Margaret Thatcher in The Crown a good one then, if you've met the lady firsthand? Um, I mean, you've got to say yes, haven't you? Isn't it funny when you think of Margaret Thatcher, because I know Meryl Streep did it, didn't she? I always think of Steve Nallen from Spitting Image. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever anybody says who's done Margaret Thatcher, I always go, oh, yeah, Steve Nallen. Do you remember the way he used to depict her in a very sort of manly way, didn't he? Oh, so, she's uh, lucky for that, Phil. No, and it's all right, she's not here. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, she. Uh, I love The Crown anyway. I just adore oh, that series. I adore and, The Crown. Yeah, I was glad when they got up to the stage that they are, because it's all very relevant, isn't it? Because you were there living through it. So oh. it's been it's going to be very, very exciting. I cannot wait for the next series. Let's just say that. Um, last kind of question towards celebrities. Anybody on your wish list, Phil? Because you've gone through a lot of people. Is there anybody oh. that you're aching to interview? Oh, gosh. Um, who would I like to interview? That, do you know, this sounds awful now, but you will understand this. Um, celebrities to me are just people. Um, I'm not really impressed by any of them not in terms of because of what they are or who they are or what they've achieved just you it's like a it's a bit like a you know sort of one in one out isn't it you know you just talk to them the whole time and they're, they're just people so the only person honestly that I well actually I'll give you two um one is the queen I'd love to interview the queen that would and be good. two only because right don't judge me he follows me on twitter and I've actually DM'd him three times now to see if he'd come on the programme, never replied, is Barack Obama. And I don't know why Barack Obama follows me, but he does. I know it's the weirdest thing. He's got like a, a millions of Twitter followers. And I think he follows about 20,000 people, something like that. And weirdly, one is I me. I can't even speak, Phil. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is is incredible. Really it's my favorite thing to do. Want to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite party trick to get up his official count, and you know, and it says follows you. 
And everyone's like, no way. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk to him. He's, he's a Oh, big... slip into his DMs. <laughs> Drop a note and stuff. Do it after the show and let me know where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting live in the hive. Oh, absolutely. He'd love it. You know, he's got bacon fries. Oh. What would you want, you know? If you were here, Phil, I would let you share my bacon fries and scampi fries. Oh, I don't like scampi. Sorry. But the bacon. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, now, it's exciting times for you because we have a little bit of a schedule change. You're actually... You're going to be staying up a bit late, Phil, but it does mean you can have a sleep in the afternoon if you want to. It oh, I can't wait. Anymore. Can't wait. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm moving to the 10 till 1 show, which is going to be Monday to Thursday. Uh, so it's one day less. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because I did breakfast for so many years. Um, the thing that the only thing that I missed about breakfast, because I hated getting up, was the fact that you got all day to yourself. Um, and... I've got lots of different projects that I do away from Radio Manchester. I've got all sorts of new things, actually, that I'm going to be doing, uh, some in the media, some not in the media. And it's just going to give me a little more time. And then, of course, at 10 at night, uh, I do love a good double entendre, as you know. Uh, we can be a little bit smuttier, maybe. I know. Mm, um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've got all my great guests from uh, who I've got in during the day. They're all going to come in. Uh, we're going to chew the cud. We've got a few quizzes. We've got Michelle Eagleton with the three things you've got to do this week. That's never heard of her. No, uh, we're doing Manchester People, which is, you know, we've spoken. Who've got this week? Tim Burgess is with us at the moment uh, from the Charlatan. So it, I'm just really looking forward to it. I've never done that time of night, strangely, in all the years I've been broadcasting. And everybody that does just says it's the best time of night because it's the only time that actually people listen. Because, of course, when you're on during the day, it's just background, isn't it? You're just a noise. Yeah. And you're doing lots of other things where at night people actually listen so i'm really and looking forward to that you'll get more callers i imagine because people are more up for it i think usually at the night time to kind of ring in and have a bit of chit chat definitely so i'm looking forward to all of that and uh as i say it's just it's just a shame i'm not starting in the summer i'd like sort of like light days sunny okay. day whereas i'm just going to be looking at the rain falling down the window aren't i <laughs> it's fine it's fine it's but fine. you fine. have to tell me have you still got your wonderful definition quiz? Is that going with you? Yes, that is coming with us. Uh, I know people love the definition quiz, so that's going to be every night. Uh, we've got a few other bits that we're doing as well. So it's going to be really exciting, actually, because it is. It's, um, you know, I, obviously I'm following in the huge footsteps of Alan Bezik, who uh -huh. uh, finished on the weekdays uh, a few months ago. He had the fifth most listened to programme across every local radio station programming throughout the country. So he's got a massive audience at that time of night. So hopefully people will no enjoy it. No pressure. Yeah. Right. I've got a surprise for you. Oh, have you? Great. Oh, I've I got great. Shell's definition quiz. Oh, I love it. Did, Are did, you did, ready? Did, you did, didn't did, know did, this, did, did you? Yeah, I didn't. Can I just say... I am hopeless at every quiz that I do, which is why I ask the questions and don't answer them. Aha, he protests, he protests. Right, I'm not going to give you a time limit on this one. Right, I know thank you have a time limit. Let's just see how you do, all right? Okay. How, how much you might stumble, all right? Are you ready for Shell's definition quiz? Yes, go. Okay, The uh, I've been really quite strategic. The words, well, the letters are... Yes. Beginning with T R O. I wonder where oh, that came no. from. Phil that was a terrible word. I, I can only think of two words. Okay, let's see. Let's see if you inspire me. Hopefully, you'll give me some. All good right. Ideas. So, anybody who hasn't listened to Phil do his definition quiz, who are you? And two, they has got to get the definition of these words that begin with the letters T R O. Are you ready, Phil? I'm ready. Go. Okay. All right. Hot. Heat type of weather. Tropical. Woo! Uh, an instrument, brass section. Oh, trombone. Yeah, something you use at a supermarket. Trolley. Yay! Uh, could be the name for a dance group or an army. Troop. Yes, you're doing well. Uh, something you would use in the garden. Trowel. Uh, a type of fish. 
Trout. You wear them. They've got two things you put your legs into. Trousers. Yay. Uh, an award. Trophy. If someone isn't happy with something you've done, what are you? Trouble. Yes. Last one. Can you do it? A small creature featured in fairy stories. Not always nice. Troll. <gasps> Get in. Ten out of ten. You know, the strange thing about that is that most of those words have been used uh, when people are writing out my name. I've been called Phil Trowell, Phil Troll, Phil. Yeah, it, so it's no surprise. I've never been called Phil Trombone, mind you. So maybe, well, there's always a first. <laughs> oh, God, you were brilliant. You were oh, absolutely thank you. Thank you. That was good. You smashed it. That. I've got Thank another you. surprise for you as well. Are you ready? Two surprises in one interview. This is like, oh, like joy, isn't it? Okay, so we have worked together over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, not just on radio. We have had our stint on TV as husband and wife. Shall I take you back down memory lane? Phil? Oh, go on. <laughs> Good morning, you're watching the Channel and Breakfast Show on Friday the 8th of May. I'm Michelle Eagleton. And I'm Phil Tro, and we have both filled in our Euro Millions tickets this morning. £110 million. Pounds. What are you going to do with yours? Well, I have this bizarre idea that I've always had. It's kind of a dream of mine that to buy the Library Theatre, not that I don't even think you can do that, but if I had the money, I'd buy the Library Theatre, turn it in to a great big nightclub come restaurant called Glitterati. And the top floor, you know, where you can see out, you know, like, like a dome like yeah. you'd see the stars so you'd have your, your meal underneath the stars <laughs> I've marked you know I've got the idea all copyrighted so don't think you can steal it because when I do win the euro millions millions tonight that's it it's mine I might in that case buy the Dutch pancake house as was and turns it into like Phil's flippers or something and reopen pancakes so when people finish with your place they can come to mine for pancakes sounds like a brilliant, brilliant. Plan, that one anyway we need a lot less than 110 million you know to do this <laughs> What was I wearing? What was I wearing? I know. About? The hair as well. I mean, it's it's not changed that much, but I, I think uh, the fake tan and it was a little <laughs> bit harsh, Bill. It was 2009, that, on Channel M. No. Yes. Oh, my gosh, was that 12 years ago? Where did oh, the time wow. go? Oh, do you know, I have to say, um, there, there are certain things, aren't there, you know, you do during your career, which you just adore. And I loved Channel M. And it's such a shame that, you know, it didn't continue because it was loved by the audience, uh, watched, we know, don't we? Because we used to do competitions uh, yeah. by loads of people. Oh, God, do you remember the Fridays with Frank Sidebottom? Oh. Uh, I mean, they were just yeah. hilarious. Um, and, of course, so many people on there. Uh, Nina Warhurst has gone on to great things. Ben Bland now mm -hmm. on BBC News. You know, it's, it was a great breeding ground, wasn't it, for uh, oh. real talent? And it real, yeah, it's just a real shame. It was absolutely fantastic. We had so much fun. And I have teased all week on our social channels about you and me getting naked together. I have to reveal <laughs> what what happened. We did it, didn't we, for a feature on fake tan, Phil, remember? I can't even remember why we did it. Why did we do it? But anyway, we went to the Lowry Hotel, didn't they? And uh, we took a cameraman, poor person who had to film this, and they stuck us in robes. And, of course, then you had to go into the uh, the sort of shower of shame with only little pants on. And this was all being filmed and we were being sprayed. And then, all, do you know what I remember about that was um, we obviously had to do a little outro so that the film came to an end. And I think it's the campiest thing I've ever done on TV. <laughs> Me and you, arm in arm, having been spray tanned, disappearing down the corridors of the Lowry. <laughs> I remember it. I remember it so, so well. I think it was about male grooming, you know, and it was kind was of it? me saying, come on, Phil, I'll show you what a fake tan's all about. And, and you, obviously... You're brilliant. You're up for it. We're both up for it. We had such a giggle and, uh, like you say, some some great times. Now, I'm going to finish off with um, a love that we both share. Uh, I'm talking glitter ball. I'm talking oh. sparkle. I'm also talking fake tan. Can we just have a moment for this? Look at that. I know. Ah, oh, the Strictly lineup this year. How excited are you now it's back on? Do you know, it was only when it came back Saturday night, because obviously it's so hyped, there is so much build-up to it, you know, the, the celebrities get released, 
uh, we have the launch show, which I never really enjoyed the launch show, but I watched it and, you know, just to see uh, how everyone does on their first dance. And then I sat down Saturday night and literally my heart was skipping with joy. Just the whole thing I find the most joyous piece of TV. I know nothing about dancing. I can't dance. Um, still, after all these years, I wouldn't know the difference between a cha-cha-cha and a rumba. Um, but I just think that as a programme and as a format is just two hours and 20 minutes of joyous TV. And um, I don't mind saying, I think I confessed this this week, um, it wasn't the dance that John and Johannes did which got me. It was when they went up to talk to Claudia and you could tell that Johannes was so emotional. And I, I found a tear rolling down my cheek. It was just, yeah, and I just love the programme. I love Claude. Um, uh, Claudia, uh, uh, Craig is just genius. I think Anton's fitted in really well. Yeah. Bit of the sort of Len Goodman type role. Um, yeah, I just love the show. I just think it's brilliant and long may it continue. And no, I'm not going to do it. Oh, I was about to say, would you do it? You no. would. No. I'd make you do it so that I could sit there in the audience <laughs> and go, Team Tro, Team Tro. Do you know, I don't think I'd make it to the top of the stairs. I think I'd hear that music, my legs would go to jelly, and that'd be it. I'd disappear, I'd say, thank you very much. That could make, that could make a, a classic, strictly kind of clip, then. You would be never, ever forgotten, Phil, for the moment that you fell down the stairs. Who do you want to win? Um, oh, that's a good question, actually. I'd obviously love John and Johannes to win for obvious reasons. Um, God, there's so many that I really, really like. I mean, I thought... Uh, AJ and Reese arguably started a little bit too well. I mean, they are incredible, aren't they? I love yeah. Tom from McFly. Uh, I love Rosie. I think she is incredible and what a brilliant and brave thing to do. Um, gosh, who would I like to win this year? I, honestly, at this moment, I think, you know, other than maybe one or two, it's just such an open field, isn't it? It's like 13 potential winners. Yeah, they're, they've got some great personalities, some great moves already. I've got to say, I'm team wait at the minute because, mm. like you said, that really moved me. And I actually just, I felt a real buzz of electricity watching that dance and the way that they changed who lead it. thought yeah. was really, really clever. So I just can't wait. I will make a date with you every Saturday night. I know we like to watch each other that. during the show. It's, uh, it's always a good thing. Yeah, and I think the other thing is as well, the fact they used Blue Order and it was Manchester just made it that little bit more special, wouldn't it? I know, it really, really switched it up. Right, you have switched my life up, Phil. Yeah. Right, I'm live in the hive. I have been dying to get you on. I could chat to you for the whole evening. So please do come back on again. And uh, I'll, have a, I'll have another quiz up my sleeve, I promise. I can't say, I'm going to build a set. I mean, this is the blandest background you will ever... I should have looked for a background or something because this is... Sorry, but we, as I say, we're having this done up. So next time... It'll be amazing. All right. That's a promise then. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you very soon, gorgeous. See you soon.